going to start the administration finance committee uh, meeting uh, with a roll call. Can we have a roll call, please? Andy Martinez. Present. Francesca Dominguez. Present. Jose Lynn Allison. Jan Leyenbecker. Here. E. Lloyd Salazar. Here. Philip Bobarczyk. Here. Thank you. Next is safety briefing uh, by Mr. Zendon. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Esparza, and I'm the Safety and Security Administrator for the CCRTA. I will be giving a short safety briefing on behalf of my supervisor, Mike Rendon, who is not able to attend today. The safety briefing will consist of emergency safety procedures. These procedures benefit the public, the board of directors, as well as our staff. In the event of an emergency, we will exit the boardroom to my right, your left, proceed toward the west stairwell down to the first floor where you will exit through the west side doors. Once outside, we will continue toward the clock tower adjacent to the transfer station. Ashley will account for all the board members and I will be the last one out to make sure everybody gets out. Three things to remember, please do not use the elevator during an emergency and please do not return until the all clear has been given. If we need to shelter in place, we will do so on the west stairwell. Thank you. Uh, receipt of conflict of interest affidavits, or do we have any? All right. Uh, next uh, opportunity for public comment. Has anyone signed up for public comment? None. Okay. Moving on. Uh, discussion and possible action to approve the administration and finance committee minutes of July 28th. Uh, we did not have a meeting on the August 25th or September 22nd. So, so move, Madam Chair. Okay. We have a motion by uh, Director Leindecker. Is there a second? Second. Second by Director Aloy Esparza. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 <coughs> Same sign. Uh, motion passes. <coughs> um, six, discussion and possible action to recommend the board directors approve the fiscal 2021 board of committee meeting uh, minutes calendar for 2022. Uh, Jorge? Yes, board members. Uh, Stephanie, do we have uh, the calendar on a slide? In your packet, you were provided the, the calendar, but I was hoping we could have it up. All right. The uh, following our, our practices that we've established over our existence, we are in essence scheduling the first Wednesday of each month as the, uh, the board meeting for the month and the fourth Wednesday of the month for committee and, and uh, operations and admin meetings as a standard practice to help, help you also identify uh, our, our special days that we have for holidays. <coughs> Those are noted in red uh, in the month. Uh, and uh, except for the month of December, everything follows the sequence except that there is no, no committee meetings being scheduled in December. And there's an adjustment to the uh, fourth Wednesday to the third Wednesday to allow for Thanksgiving uh, during that week in November. Other than that, it's pretty standard based on the information we've been provided from our from APTA and, and other issues that, that come up throughout the year. Uh, not to say that we cannot amend the, the calendar as we go through the year, but uh, we, we are scheduling the first and the fourth uh, Wednesdays of the, of the month for uh, committee and uh, board meeting dates. Is there a motion to recommend the board directors approve the fiscal 2021 board committee meeting minutes calendar for 2022? So moved. <coughs> Director uh, Leindecker, make the first motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Philip Barskit. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next <coughs> item for discussion. Uh, possible action, discussion and possible action 
directors authorize the chief executive officer or designee to adopt a resolution for goodbye purchasing cooperative mr saldana good morning so we are here to adopt a resolution uh, to join uh, the goodbye board purchasing co-op this uh, aligns with the ccrk board priority of public image and transparency so CCRK utilizes various ways to purchase goods from simple things of um, small purchases of just getting three quotes and getting a small purchase order or purchase order to formal procurements such as RFPs and IFDs which we require. This kind of falls in between those in there. What we're looking to do uh, today is enter into a buy board which um, essentially is a, a co-op which pulls hundreds of companies together and uh, leverages the purchasing power for that. This saves time and resources for us and, and funds as well because we get a discount from the purchasing power of all these companies. So to become a member of the buy board, uh, we need a resolution passed by the board of directors. Um, becoming a member of this co-op allows the CCRK to purchase op opportunities for goods and services and this meets all local as well as state competitive bidding requirements. There are no membership fees. They make their money from a discount that, that they, by sending other companies and prying from them, they get, they get money back from the, the co-op themselves. Um, there is no DBE since this is more of a state uh, buy board. A DBE more is a federal program. So at this time, staff requests or recommends the board of directors authorize the chief executive officer or designee to execute a resolution for goodbye purchasing co-op. And I'll answer any questions you may have. Uh, can you give me an idea of some of the larger purchases that we make, maybe the top three that so we utilize this program for? Or we not this exact program, but kind of the same concept in here. We buy, the last big purchase we had were our uh, cutaway buses, the uh, ones that we use for paratransit. We bought that off a state contract, and that's kind of aligns with that state contracts and buy boards are where these companies go out and do the formal procurement themselves, and they receive all the bids and, and, and they put all the federal clauses in what they need to do and uh, we leverage all the purchasing power from various state organizations. So we go anything from buying small things like pencils and paper, uh, paper clips, all the way up to buses. Uh, usually our big 40 foot buses, we do that off of our own RFPs that we as opportunities and stuff, other things like that. Okay, thank you. So what's the ceiling on before you go to an RFP? $50,000. Once you hit $50,000, we do an RFP for that. Uh, I want the record to reflect that uh, Lynn Allison is here. Thank you. Um, is there any other further questions? Discussion? Is there a motion to recommend the Board of Directors authorize the CEO or designee to adopt a resolution uh, for goodbye purchasing cooperative? So moved. Uh, first uh, motion was by uh, Director Eloy Salazar. Second? I'll second. Okay. Second by Director Lynn Allison. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, eight, committee chair report. At this point, at this uh, time, I do not have a um, chair report. So anyone else need to comment or anything? then uh, meeting is adjourned, 8.38. Good job, girl. <laughs> Wait, that's okay. Gotcha, woman. Uh, uh, a minutes. <laughs> Mr. Chairman and... Uh,
some of our members to arrive. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. It is 8.52 a.m. Um, can I get a roll call, please? Ana Jimenez. Present. Beatriz Canales. Beatriz Canales. Present. Armando Gonzalez. Matt Worldwide. Present. Madam Chair, there is a quorum. Thank you. Um, safety brief briefing item two. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Esparza. I'm the safety and security administrator for the CCRTA. I will be giving a short safety briefing on behalf of my supervisor, Mike Rendon, who was unable to attend today. The safety briefing will consist of safe emergency safety procedures, which benefit the public, the board of directors, as well as our staff. In the event of an emergency, we will exit the boardroom to my right, your left, proceed towards the west stairwell down to the first floor where you will exit through the west side doors. Once outside, we will continue to the clock tower adjacent to the transfer station. Ashley will account for all the board members and I will be the last one out to make sure everybody gets out. Three things to remember. Please do not use the elevator during the emergency. Please do not return until the all clear has been given. And if we do need to shelter in place, we will do so in the west side stairwell. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, item three, receipt of conflict of interest affidavits. Have we received any? None. Uh, item four, opportunity for public comment. Anybody sign up for public comment? None. None. Moving on to item five, discussion and possible action to approve the Operations and Capital Projects Committee meeting minutes of September 22nd, 2021. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Director Woolbright. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Director Woolbright. Any further discussion on the on the item? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Item seven: discussion and possible action to recommend the board of directors authorize the chief executive officer or designee to approve the fiscal year 2022 holiday and service levels. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Derek. Yeah. Board priority for this is public image and transparency. Each year, service standards require the board of directors approve of the holidays and service levels on or near the holiday dates. For fiscal year 2022, the proposed holidays and service levels were determined by the executive management, historic ridership data, and any public input we've had throughout the year. This year, it does include the Juneteenth federal holiday as a proposed new holiday. Again, the staff must seek Board of Directors approval for the holidays and associated service levels. This helps guide the decisions for leave requests and for maintaining appropriate staffing levels near the holidays. And it's used for public notifications regarding the holidays and service levels. Here's that the first part of it. We put Friday, December 31st in there as informational as that was approved last year, to just to show the continuation of the holiday season. So on, on Saturday, January 1st is New Year's Day, and we'll be running a Saturday service level and then administrative and customer service is closed. On Monday, January 17th is Martin Luther King Day and we will be um, providing our normal service levels but the administrative and customer service center is closed. On April 15th is Good Friday. It's a, we're running weekday service levels but it is the observed holiday for, for Easter for staff. The administrative and customer service will be closed. On Sunday, April 17th is Easter and there will be no service provided and all facilities will be closed. Monday, May 30th is Memorial Day. We'll be running a reduced service level and that is generally, it's equivalent to our Sunday level of service. And then administrative and customer service will be closed. On Sunday, June 19th is Juneteenth. Because it's Sunday, we'll be running the Sunday service levels. And uh, as normal, our admin, admin and customer service is closed. On June 20th is when the admin and customer service center will be observing the Juneteenth holiday <laughs> and that will, they will be closed. But we will be providing our normal weekday service level to the community. On Monday, July 4th, Independence Day, we'll be running again the reduced service levels that are equivalent to a Sunday level of service and the admin and customer service is closed. 
Monday, September 5th is Labor Day. We'll be running the reduced service levels with admin and customer service closed. On thir Thursday, November 24th is Thanksgiving and there will be no service and all facilities and offices will be closed. Here we just show Friday, Black Friday, we will be providing our normal weekday level of service to the community, no holiday. Sunday, December 25th is Christmas, we'll be providing no service and all facilities will be closed. December 26th is, will be the observed Christmas holiday, so administrative and customer service will be closed, but we will be providing our whole weekday level of service to the community. And then on Sunday, January 1st, New Year's Day, we'll be providing Sunday level of service, but admin and customer service will be closed as normal on a Sunday. And then Monday, January 2nd, will be the observed holiday for the admin staff and customer service. They will be closed, but we will be providing our weekday level of service any costs associated with this are included in the 2022 operating budget. With that staff request, the Operations and Capital Projects Committee recommend the Board of Directors authorize the Chief Executive Officer or designee to approve the fiscal year 2022 holidays and service levels. Any questions? Yeah, one question on Black Friday. Um, what percentage of staff takes that day off? I don't have the exact number, but for Operations being a majority of the, um, the the workforce here, most of them are going to be be at work. We we can only allow so many operators or or street supervisors to be off during that time. Totally y'all's call. I would support that being a admin and customer service holiday if we could. A lot of people are out of town. It's a good time for family. So if that's something y'all wanted to pitch or talk about, we would have my support. Yeah, it's definitely something to talk about. The one change we did make there was several years ago, we used to run a reduced service level, but there's a lot of, you know, the food service workers and people like that, they're still at work. So we did a couple years ago, move the Black Friday to being full service for the community, but staff wise, yeah, it's I, limited. I think the service level needs to stay the same because it's probably one of the busier days, but from a non-essential to the daily operations staff, have the day off. Any other, other questions? questions for Derek? Can I get a motion to recommend the Board of Directors authorize the CEO or designee to approve the fiscal year 2022 holiday and service level? I'll make it a motion. Do you need that for a second? Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Thank you so much, Derek. Item seven, discussion and possible action to recommend the board of directors authorize the chief executive officer or designee to award the option year to Nash Entities, Inc. for power washing the transfer stations. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Good morning to everyone. Good this morning. item aligns with board priorities for facilities and safety. All right, just some background information. The CCRTA has four transfer stations. We have our Robstown transfer station, our Southside Transfer Station, our Port Ayers Transfer Station, and our Staple Street Transfer Station. As far as identified need, uh, facilities took a look at everything we were doing when COVID started and identified areas where we wanted to improve the cleanliness. Um, so it was decided we would go out for a contractor um, to add another layer of sanitizing and to supplement the facility staff. We issued the invitation for bid. We did receive 13 proposals last year. Three proposals were non-responsive. Nash Entities was the lowest bid at $151,008. Nash Entities has been in business since 2003, or about 18 years. Clients include Chick-fil-A, Visit CC, Montgomery County, and now the CCRTA. <coughs> the services performed for the CCRTA over the past year have been satisfactory, and the contractor has been responsive and responsible. This is not a federal contract. DBE participation is 0%. Financial impact is $151,008. Funding will be provided through local funds. Therefore, staff requests the Operations and Capital Projects Committee recommend the Board of Directors authorize the Chief Executive Officer or designee to award the option year to Nash Entities, Inc. 
for the power washing of the transfer station. That concludes my pr uh, presentation, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Chair. Do we have any questions regarding this item? Is there a motion to recommend the Board of Directors authorize the Chief Executive Officer or designee to award the option year to Nash Entities, Inc. for power washing the transfer stations? Thank you. Um, let the record reflect that uh, Director Canales is present um, and she has made the, the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Director Wilbright. All those in favor? Item 8, discussion and possible action to recommend the Board of Directors authorize Chief Executive Officer or designee to enter into negotiations for design services with Hanson Professional Services, Inc. and Zer um, um, sorry about the name, Zarin Darren Kelk. Kelk Engineering Services for ADA bus stop improvements, Phase 8. Thank you, Madam Chair. This item aligns with our board's priority for facilities. Background information, we have a total of 1,375 bus stops. 852 bus stops are, have been approved to date. 62% ADA compliant bus stops. Upon completion of phase seven, which is currently underway, estimated ADA compliant bus stops will be 978 or 71% ADA compliancy. The goal for ADA improvements is 100% ADA compliancy. That's with the caveat that we've got the right of way that we need to do that because there are certain requirements that you have to follow. Um, and if we don't have enough right of way, that sometimes prevents that ADA. Uh, we are estimating improving 54 bus stops in this phase, 24 bus stops per zone, estimated at 75% ADA compliancy after phase eight is completed. We issued the RFQ on July 28th. Uh, we received the statements on September 15th. We did receive five proposals. Written criteria are the following items. Firm qualifications, key personnel qualifications, work approach, quality of client services, supporting information, the engineer services questionnaire, and DBE. This table reflects the scoring as you can see, Hanson Professional Services scored the highest at 98.2, and Zara Kelt Engineering Services scored second at 83.2. All firms have varying degrees of experience. Hanson Professional Services, their main office is in Springfield, Illinois. They do have a local office here, and they've been in business 67 years. Zara Kelt is located in Houston. They've been in business 21 years. Both firms have completed ADA bus stop improvements for us before and did an uh, outstanding job. DBE goal for this is 6%, and both firms have committed to meeting the goal. The estimated cost for this project is 53000 for both firms, roughly around twenty six five. The The fees are based on a percentage of construction estimated around 12.2%. Therefore, staff requests the Operations and Capital <laughs> Projects Committee to recommend the Board of Directors authorize the Chief Executive Officer designee to enter into negotiations for design services with Hanson Professional Services, Inc. and Zarin Kelt Engineering Services for ADA bus stop improvements, Phase 8. If the negotiations do not progress in a manner satisfactory to the CCRTA, then staff requests enter into negotiations with the next highest scoring firm. Madam Chair, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions for Sharon? I do. Um, Ms. Montes, how come we would only be 75% in compliance? Because at that point, based on what we were previously, um, when we add those additional stops, that takes our compliancy to about 75%. Now, every year we do bus stop improvements. <coughs> and whereas before we started at maybe a million, we're dropping the amount because now we're getting to the stops that we don't have uh, larger ridership. 
also we're going into our long, long range system plan and we don't know if we're going to have any service changes or bus stop removal um, so we want to slow down a little bit but still continuing the process because we're not ADA compliant. No, ma'am, we do not. Yes, ma'am. So is this an annual, this is an annual process, correct? Yes, sir, it is. So at roughly 13% a year, we should be done in two years? And then are we getting to 75 or 71% after this project? There's oh, two I different numbers in there. Do I have two separate numbers? I believe it was 71%. Okay, not 75. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why two engineering firms? The model that we have created over the years allows for us to uh, provide other entities with opportunities to bid. So historically, when we started the process, we started with four zones and four engineering firms. So that way we were able to work with four different companies, maybe we hadn't worked with them before, to give them an opportunity to work with CCRTA and open that door. It just depends. And then at that point, you also, by having the different zones, you allow contractors to have a better opportunity to, to bid and meet the bonding requirement. And so that's why we developed the model to where you would have, whether it's five zones, three zones, four zones, you'd have the same amount of engineers that, and you would try to give contractors the opportunity to bid on those different zones as well. So they can meet bonding requirements. So, but it, the zone and the number of engineering firms are sort of unrelated, right? I mean, a larger firm could have two engineers for e one for each zone. Is that right? You could, you could. I, the only reason I ask is because the scores are so dramatically different. Um, that's a pretty large drop off in quality uh, based on the scoring system, and it's not a huge number that would be outside of the a regular firm's workflow. I mean, it's barely over for his signature authority. Uh, I understand. That might be something we're going to look at uh, before the board meeting. Thank you. for Sharon is there a motion to recommend the board of directors authorize the CEO or designee to enter into negotiations for design services with Hanson professional services and Zarin Kelk engineering services Inc for ADA bus stop improvements phase eight is there a second Thank you. all those in favor Okay, motion passes. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Sharon. Um, item nine, committee chair report. Nothing new to report. Um, looking forward to um, doing our board meeting in a couple in the next week. Um, thank you, staff, for all your hard work. Again, your presentations are evident that you guys put the research into the process. Um, any other comments? During the meeting, it is 9, 10 a.m.